guys, this is Heiss, and today I wanted to talk about a trip that I took a couple weekends ago down to the Durango and Silverton in Durango, Colorado. Decent drive from Denver on the other side of the state, and uh, myself and the three-quarter idiots went down to ride the 50 years ago in the snow charter. They backdated one of the locomotives and some of the cars to look like it was 1973 and made a whole charter out of it. And we'll talk a little bit more about the charter specifically later, but on the trip, it really reminded me what I love about Colorado Narrow Gauge and the Durango and Silverton overall. It's really been like six years since I've properly been down to Durango and spent a fair amount of time there. And getting to be around the roundhouse, seeing all the locomotives, having multiple engines hot and everything that they did throughout the charter really reminded me why I love Colorado Narrow Gauge. Bike path, three foot gauge. Not, th not three foot gauge. No. No, but where is Choo Choo? Anyone see a K36? I see a headlight on my phone. It's a little fast for the Alamosa dance. God, she sounds pissed. Brand new rings, man. Initiated, the Durango and Silverton's a 45 mile chunk of the original Denver and Rio Grande Western. Locomotives 491 and 346 that we have at the Colorado Railroad Museum that I deal with all the time uh, would have run at least two Durango, 346 maybe up to Silverton. But it's an original portion of the right of way that was built in the early 1880s, I believe completed 1882. You can fact check me in the comments. And it is some of the prettiest territory out there. The railroad starts out of Durango, which was one of the bigger towns on the railroad. There's a big roundhouse, lots of facilities and everything. And as such, the town's pretty big too. There's still a college and all sorts of snow sports and other things that go on down there as well beyond the train. So it's a decent place for the railroad to live back then and in the modern day, which really helps the DNS be a success. The first chunk of the alignment is running through town and out of town and has a lot of neat things that I got to learn and nerd out about as far as grade crossings and fun stuff like that. Once you get through town, you start running through the valley kind of high speed, 20, 25 mile an hour, high speed for narrow gauge, getting up to the point where the railroad starts to wander up the Animus River Canyon. And when it starts getting up in the canyon is when the scenery just becomes incredible. I mean, I'm sure every video that's been done on the Durango and Silverton has this shot of the High Line. I mean, the High Line is like picturesque. I mean, it's as picturesque as anything out there. It's probably the best piece of narrow gauge scenery that I'm aware of, at least, that I've seen. It's kind of incredible. Uh, but the real magic for me is not so much the pretty views, which are great and great for the general audience and everyone, but it's more so the fact that the railroad is still operating with the right equipment in the right way still to this day. Part of the charter they had a nighttime photo shoot at the roundhouse the 476 was hot so was the 481 and they had other engines staged around and lights and and being out in the freezing cold at night was a bit of a challenge but really fun and the magic of seeing multiple engines hot at the durango roundhouse where all three of my engines would have been at some point 346 the 20 the 491 all of my touchstones with steam railroading have all spent time in that roundhouse at some time or another. And to see their sisters and cousins and everybody in that roundhouse under steam at night is just magic. The roundhouse isn't original, at least not most of it. It burnt down in the 1980s sometime and got rebuilt, but 
It's been rebuilt to the same pattern and it looks and fits the bill. When you walk into the roundhouse and you look up, you can't see the ceiling. The ceiling is just pitch black from all of the smoke from over the years. It's just a really, really cool environment and it was a great environment to get to work in. I spent a couple weeks there in 2016 evaluating the 493 back another life ago. But the shop's really cool and it's historic and was a big important point for the Rio Grande and it still is for the Durango and Silverton. And it's still populated by all these Rio Grande outside frame Mikados that are that are running trains almost daily in the winter and daily multiple times over in the summer. The shop's also really cool in that they're set up to do all of the work on the engines. You know, we walked into the shop, got to see around and see things, and it's like they've got diesel locomotives they're repairing. They've got steam locomotives with drivers out from underneath them. They're turning wheels. They're doing this. I mean, they're set up to do everything to these steam engines still and it's really cool to see that in its original place a location that can do that work on the locomotives that are supposed to be there it's really cool it's so cute it's and the flat. flat i dig that <laughs> that's for when you've got a, a convex uh dual yeah. spiraled uh pipe And speaking of original locomotives that are supposed to be there, the three K28s that they have, the 473, the star of the charter, the 476, and then the 478 have run that line for eons. They're turning a hundred years old this year. The K28s, the sport model, the wacky cool looking steam engines, a lot of character to them. They have run that branch forever. Back in the 1950s, 1960s, when the Rio Grande started operating it as a tourist train, as well as carrying freight between Durango and Silverton, the K-28s were the ones to do it. And so the 28s have been running this line and ran the line under the Denver and Rio Grande until 1980. Steam on a common carrier freight railroad until 1980. And then it got sold over and became a tourist line specifically in 1981. So the fact that those K-28s are still there doing the thing, and we have, you know, almost 50 years of tourist service, specifically with those locomotives, is kind of incredible to see. And the fact that they're still running and doing everything is amazing. The line didn't originally see K36s and K37s, it wasn't quite set up for it with the bridge restrictions and things like that, but these days the K36s and K37s run on the line too. And there's something magical about knowing that all these rails are home rails for these locomotives, whether it's Durango and, and up to Rockwood, which was as far as the 36s or 37s would run, uh, or all the way to Silverton with the K28s. Seeing the locomotive run where it was supposed to and where it has 
kind of unaltered and uh, like almost being taken back in time, not even thinking about the charter is kind of incredible. Uh, and it's one of the unique places in the world where you have all these locomotives, the historic equipment, everything on the historic alignment. And people joke about, oh, well, Rio Grande narrow gauge is overrated and whatever. And okay, well, I don't know why we're rating what train is better than whatever. The neat thing for us is these are unique, cool looking locomotives that we still have a ton of them somehow by luck, by just the way that things unfolded. And a lot of them are still running where they did. There's some railroads that don't have any steam that got saved. There's some railroads that cut up all of the big, important, fancy steam locomotives they had. New York Central Hudson's are gone. The New Haven doesn't have any steam locomotives left. We have over 20 Rio Grande Mikados left and they had 45 of them. We have nine of the 10 K36s, eight of the 10 K37s, and of the K36s, all but one of them run. I mean, it's kind of a marvel of preservation and getting to know and, and see these engines where they were supposed to be still to this day is there's some air of magic to it. So getting into the photo charter itself, backdating things 50 years, the locomotive with yellow railing frogs and a weird stack and, and all the cars have the circus lettering on it because that's what they had in the 1970s was really neat. But the special thing for us, I think, was that we got to have all these photo run bys where they would let us off at an unusual location where normal trains wouldn't stop or you wouldn't get off before. And then the train would back up and run past so you could get pictures or videos or whatever, which is pretty common on many photo charters. But it meant we got to be put into these different places in the canyon where the sound was just incredible. Uh, I have always been a huge fan of all things audio, music, guitars, whatever. And the sound of steam trains is one of my favorite things in the whole world. And with the reverb of the canyon, Oh, ah, it was an incredible weekend. Well, I'm planning on being on the, leaning in like I'm pretending I'm in combat by the box. <laughs> As he sinks into all of the snow again. <sighs> was so freaking cool. <laughs> Thank you. 
buddy Nick Frieden was the engineer, and he was having way too much fun with the Lunkenheimer three chime. Um, it's funny to me. Uh, the last time I really rode the railroad completely was almost seven years ago in 2016. And I rode behind Nick on one of his student engineer trips. And now to see that he's actually the third guy out, third in seniority as far as engineers go. And he's obviously a really smooth engineer and is really practiced and can sit there and, and get the whistle quill just perfect. Like he's had enough time to perfect that, you know, is, is kind of fun to see from the last time when I just got to ride behind him and, and he was learning the railroad and everything. And listening to Nick with the three chime all day was just a treat. With that reverb, it was the perfect combo. He had way too much fun with it. In that same vein, the guy who is organizing and dealing with all the charter setup and orchestration and runbys and everything is Russell. And last time I was down there, Russell's brakeman and was just kind of doing it over the summer, you know, in between college and stuff. And now this is his full time gig. And it was like, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. He's putting on a really good show and orchestrating things really well. It was a wonderful charter, wonderful event. And it was really cool to see someone like step into their own and own this sort of role uh, in a new way, which I hadn't even thought about really before because it had been so long since I'd been down there. And of course, it was also funny to watch him eat it and fall in the snow. He told me if it didn't end up on YouTube, he would be mad. So hi, Russell. Shots like, like that either look really cool <sighs> or really dumb. Hopefully it'll be really cool. How wide is that lens? Very. Oh God. <laughs> like it just caught you falling entirely. Yes. Nice job, Dylan. <laughs> the rod's just gonna come by. And bam. Right on top of that. It has been in danger of that many a time. It is. Uh, maybe it's. It's a round railhead height. It's fine. I own four of those because I've been worried about destroying them several times. So if I do lose one, it's not the end of the world. But perhaps my favorite thing of this whole charter weekend was Leighton, Brett, and I got it into our heads that it's a 1970s charter, so we might as well look like we're from the 1970s. <laughs> and so Leighton looked like his best used car salesman, Brett tried to do his best CW McCall, and I tried to do my best hippie guitar player, man. We got a few strange looks. Some people didn't get it, some people did. And finally, at the end of the day, at the end of the charter, they called us up to be in the crew shot because uh, we were just too extra. Oh, and Big Deal joined us in on the, uh, the fun jokes. So if you've seen his YouTube videos, which are wonderful, by the way, uh, he got in on the fun too kind of being a Lieutenant Dan-esque kind of character. But we had so much fun that whole weekend. You guys smell that? It smells like... It smells... It smells like... Ah! So this is Round Hill. 
you can tell that by the way. By the way that it is, because it round. You you see where Choo Choo used to be, is is little mound, little mound right there, and and then Choo Choo go very straight for a very long time that way with narrow gauge and confuse everyone. What was once the longest straight piece of track in the world. And your life becomes weathered and dull. What? Who are these people? <laughs> Who are these people? So this railroad right here, this is Alamosa to Antonito. And you'll recognize that bridge up ahead from that video in which a K36 kills a cow. It's on YouTube. If Look you it know, up. You know. If you know, you know. It is 6.51 in the morning. It feels like it's too early. So early that we've transformed. It's 50 years too early. It's 50 yeah. years too early. Right on. What year is it? What, what year is it? What year is it, man? What year is it, man? What year is what it, year man? Is it? What year is it, man? <laughs> I've had a realization that when I stare down at my pants, the Bee Gees starts playing. See? Nothing. Yeah, see? I'm yeah. here to put you in a used Cadillac. <laughs> yes, you are. Roller bearings? I just like the circus train font. But I won't watch the engine get put on the train. Well, we can at least put our shit down. Well, that's, that's true. Cool. That is true. We can, mar we can mark it, our territory. <clears throat> that's why I went to grad school. Look at you. Luggage rack. We pull this for the restroom, right? Yes. Yeah. Open the door. I need to pee. <laughs> Let me know. Who in the blazes pulled that emergency brake? You guys look cool. We're ready for Dude, the we're, we're so ready. It's still so weird to hear a spitter valve in Durango. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan! Lieutenant Dan! Lieutenant Dan's here! I'll have legs! You do! They work! <laughs> Bell bottoms on those legs! <laughs> well done, sir. Yeah, well. I, well like I said, I put this on and I'm like, What the hell changed? Nothing's changed except the bell bottoms! They look literally the same! <laughs> bell bottoms had a bad look for you. I'm not gonna oh lie. I walked into the depot this morning and had the same thing. It's like, oh. The suit is a little out of place, but otherwise we really don't look that out of character. <laughs> <laughs> this is like 90% normal. Yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, well. Are you doing a video of this? I am. Okay, I'll try not to. Oh, you're all fine. Look, it's Brian Burton, everyone. <laughs> look, there he is. Nice. Ah! Follow me. <laughs> <laughs> Internet 6 8 Insulation. <laughs> like, subscribe. <laughs> Comment. Oh, click yeah. the bell. Can I offer you a lime in this trying time, sir? <laughs> yes, yes you can. Can I offer this to you as a totem? What am I supposed to do with this? Well, I don't know, fill it and hand it back to the collector. What do you want? Fill it. <laughs> you know what I want. I've also got more pairs of stupid glasses oh, if, you want, if you want to buy them. <laughs> I'm glad. He's prepared. But where does the coal go? Damn! It's clean! Yeah! Look at all the clean! Yeah! Oh, nice. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! It is cold. One quick run by the Choo Choo. K28s! Diamond stack! It's a vibe! You've made life decisions. I only regret minimal things. <laughs> the list is short, but there is a list. There is a list. There goes the K-28. But none of them involved the 1968 Cadillac Eldorado. I could put you in today. <laughs> oh my god, Leighton. <laughs> Who yeah, broke you? you? Just, you just oh my god, it's a big deal. Ah! Is this the place to be, Joe? Sort of. Sort of? It's up to you, but it's I'm up. happy. <laughs> okay.
to conceit in the wild. One idiot and two idiots. And a K28 and a breed. Yeah, man. 5% ability to do anything. Yeah, man. <laughs> now that's Leighton in the, uh, in the snowshoes, I think. No, Leighton's got it covered. <laughs> Leighton's got it totally covered. It's amazing. I made it further out into the boonies and cowboy boots and bell bottoms. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, I found a good spot and I stuck with it. You did. You did. Because you couldn't move because you were stuck. No, I was not stuck. <laughs> I only got slightly stuck at one point and then I unstuck myself. I Come discovered... On. So, yeah. function people are giving crap, but no, there is no there is no snow in these boots because no, the bell bottoms. Yeah, the bell know. bottoms have shielded the, the, the boots. Worked. This was uh, planned planned for this. Yeah. One eight hundred. My idea. Yes. Yes. A thousand percent. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, man. My photographer level has increased. You could choose to be a part of the line. <laughs> or the tree line. Or hide up a tree. Or hide up a tree. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Experience get. <laughs> Experience achievement get. Achievement. How dare you? Like a dolphin or something. Have some snow. Thank you. <laughs> Leighton, your, your snow's pumping. Your snow's pumping. You gotta you gotta you gotta, you gotta tamp. He's tamping. He's tamping it as hard as I can, sir. <laughs> Somebody had to. Yeah. Perfect. No, but now there's a snow angel next to the shot. <laughs> we call this walking through the train ASMR. Here's Layton's backside, ASMR. <laughs> yeah. Look at the backside of Corridor. There's rocks on one side and not rocks on the other side, too. This is it's quite the development. Guys, guys, what happened? It's it's just, there's, there's no one else on the train. Ah! Hey, did you bring enough body bags? It was a great weekend. We had so much fun with the, the stupid mustache, the bell bottoms, all that flavor of thing. Listening to Steam work the way that it used to do and has for a hundred plus years in that same location, with the original rear grand locomotives and cars and everything with great friends all across the board. We had so much fun. It was such a great adventure. And, and, and that's really what railroading and this sort of thing boils down to for me and, and makes it important for me is having fun with the people that are so invested in this thing. Brett, Leighton and I are all in preservation working at the Railroad Museum as volunteers or staff or whatever. We're all here to try and continue the preservation of all the Rio Grande equipment and getting to go see it in the wild all set up, backdated, and all this stuff was a lot of fun. And it's really important, because having a good time and, and <laughs> posting with your friends is a really important thing and really fulfilling. When I was a little kid, my granddad, who I call Choo Choo Bob, who got me into all this train stuff in the first place, always would tell me stories about the Rio Grande narrow gauge and he would tell me stories of the Cumbres and Toltec and the Durango and Silverton and how we were going to get to go out there and, and go ride the trains and experience this stuff together. And unfortunately he passed away from lung cancer when I was nine years old. So we never got a chance to do that. And so for me, 
finding my idiots. My beautiful idiots and Brett and Leighton and all the other friends that came with us and were on the charter. Getting to experience the Colorado Narrow Gauge, the Rio Grande equipment, in the place that it has been for so long is just magic, fulfilling, and completely wonderful. And that's why places like the Durango and Silverton are just absolute treasures. So if you haven't checked them out yet, you should probably go check them out. Thanks for watching.